Hi everyone! It's Lisa from Lisa's Painting Parties um, and I just wanted to say welcome to our um, bonus se session. Um, so we're going to be doing um, this little camper image on the bottom of the screen. Um, it was the one with um, a lot of votes this week. Um, and I'm just pre-recording this session because I am not too confident on um, how my connection is going to be at the campsite that I will be at this weekend. Um, and so um, just in case I'm not able to do my live um, as at the normal scheduled time, um, here is a session for you guys to still enjoy and then we can do um, the other painting at our time if it doesn't work out. Hopefully it still works out and everything's fine, but I'm a bit of a control freak and I want to make sure that um, your expectations are um, addressed and you guys get uh, the, uh, still a painting session regardless. Um, maybe even two! Yay! Um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing this um, camper here and I'm pre-recording it so we actually have the benefit since I'm using this setup of having the image right there on the screen which is super exciting but it's not something I can do normally when I do my Facebook lives. Um, so there we go. So we're going to get started today. I'm going to readjust my camera so that you can see um, my canvas. My cat just jumped up on there. Um, and I'll try to keep it as closely to how I do a live session as possible so it still has the same vibe and feel. Um, I have some music going on in the background. There is some construction happening outside so hopefully that doesn't interfere too much. But we will get started. So let me just reposition this camera. Wah! Nope, not like that. Not like that. Look at that. This is the HD camera I've been trying to use this whole freaking time. Maybe right there, like that. So you can still kind of see the image. Doesn't interfere with the picture too much. It might a little bit, so I'm going to bring it up a little closer. Okay, awesome possum. Okay, great. Let's have some paper towel. I'm just going to get a sheet going beside me in case I need it as I go. So yeah, so as per usual, oh, my canvas is getting gross. I really have to scrape off all those additional um, paint that I have there. Okay, so as per usual, we're going to be using our basic colors. We have blue, we have red, we have yellow, we have black and white. So those are going to be the main ones that we are going to be using today. I do have some other pre-mixed colors behind, um, just in case. You can really, you can play with whatever colors um, you so desire. My canvas today, this one is a, like a not... Mm, yeah, it's like a 9 by 14 or something. Yeah, let, let's go with that. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's a canvas board. We're going to use that. I have my water container ready to go. And we have our brushes. So we have a nice big fat brush. We have a medium brush. And we also have a thin brush. Da -da. Okay, let's get to go. So let's start off. So with this image, we're going to start off by putting in the beautiful sky. Again, this is our inspiration image. This is not an image I painted. Um, so I'm definitely going to be playing a little bit with it and making it my own. This music's a little loud. Just give me a second. I'm just going to make it a little quieter. It's kind of bugging me. I want it to be, you can hear it, but I don't want it to interfere. Now it's probably too low. All right, we'll just get it a little bit changed up a little bit. Okay, cool. I think that should be all right. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to get some blue started on my palette. I did a big dollop of blue. I'm going to put a little bit of white and a little bit of black just so I can start doing some mixy mixies with it. I also don't know if I want my, my moon to be as big as in this um, image so I might be changing that up a little bit and I want to play with it but I still want to keep the cartoon kind of vibe to it so I'm going to start off with my big fat brush gonna get it a little wet I think I'm going to start off with wetting the canvas today so I'm just going to put water with my big fat brush all along the top of the canvas Okay, don't soak it too much, so, but just stick it, just so it starts, just so it um, has a nice way for the paint to 
start blending and, and smoothing. So you want to cover it pretty nicely. So now that it's wet, I'm going to get my blue paint and I'm just going to start putting it on. And you'll see that the canvas is wet. Anyone who's painted before, when you paint directly on dry canvas, um, it won't be this streaky or smooth. It kind of like stops. Um, so this already is giving you a bit of a technique here. You can see the canvas beneath it, which is not, I'm not really a fan of that too much, but it does allow us to cover this with paint very quickly. And that's what we're going to do. Let's get blue all over the background. Now the sky goes until about, I'm probably going to bring it like one third of the way down. That's where I want to bring the blue. Just eyeball it. I would say just go lower than what you think. If you think you want it to go a little bit lower than that, do it. And as you're painting, don't forget the sides and the top of your canvas, especially if you're using an actual canvas and not just a canvas board or um, a canvas. Sometimes there's canvas like sheets of paper, which are very cool actually. I've been playing with those too, but they do curl up quite a bit. So, I mean, I guess that makes sense. They are made to hold the weight of the paint, but I'll dry a little curly curly. I'm totally already painting on. I shouldn't have fabric around, but I do. I like fabric. Now yeah, well. Paint on everything. Okay. So again, just for anyone who's joining who hasn't joined before, I'm gonna just show you like my approach to this. You can feel free to change things up however you so desire. If you want to make your sky purple, green, whatever, you can change it up however you want. There's no right or wrong way. With this one, I'm going to try and stick with the image similarly, but I am going to make a couple changes to it. Um, so what I want to do right now is I have the blue in the background, but I want to create a little bit of depth and make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of black. So I just put black on my brush and I'm just going to bring it right in to this blue. Everything is still wet because we pre wet the canvas. So it's very easy for this black to blend in nicely with the blue and it doesn't overpower too much although black does power very very quickly so just be cautious of that I do want it to be a little darker so I'm going to put a little bit more black in this corner still using the big fat brush and I haven't rinsed it off or cleaned it off yet I'm still still the same content on there so there's still blue on there okay I'm gonna get some more blue and just bring it in here. Okay, so we're creating a nice kind of gradient sky and it's a little bit darker in this corner. Just bring that up and I'm just gonna go back and forth, have a sweepy kind of motion on it. And again, just touching the sides because now it's a little bit darker than the blue. Put some more blue and just bring that back into the black because I still want this to be mostly blue, but I do like the streaky effect that's happening. And also by doing this, I am making it a little more opaque because again, when you add water to it, it makes your paint streaky um, and it's not as opaque to the canvas. Okay, so there we go. So there, I think I'm pretty happy with the sky. I always want to add more to the sky. I always want to make it like more colors and more streaks, but for like a nice night sky, I think it's giving a good effect. It has some nice black going on. It still has the blue poking through. It's lighter on this side, which is where we're going to have our moon and the stars are going to pop really nicely. Cool. So as that's drying, let's go in and start doing our um, our base here. So if you have a premixed brown, so I have a premixed brown, cinnamon brown, I'm going to use that right off the hop. Um, if you don't have brown, what you can do is you can mix um, like blue and red. That will give you like a purple. You can put in some yellow into that um, and then you will get um, a brown color and you can lighten it up or darken it depending with either a white or a black. Just be cautious with those colors because it may just turn into like a gray, which can work for the for the for that anyways. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go right in and I my brush I still haven't cleaned it off or anything. I just want to start putting it at the bottom. 
and I'm just going to get some brown going in here. So, and I'm doing this because I want my sky to dry before we do anything else on the sky. And this brown, this brown um, land, I guess, is also in the background of our painting. So we're basically just getting all of our background, everything that's going to be in the back, painted first so we can pop beautiful bright colors right on top of it okay and so for this this is going to go up again also about a third of the way ish maybe a, yeah about a third of the way let's bring it up we can still put mountains on top of it and cover it up as desired and you'll notice so with this i did not put any um water on the canvas and you'll notice um, as you're just putting straight paint on it, you're going to need a lot more paint to cover. And it's not going to go on as smooth as when you wet the canvas, but it is going to be way more opaque. And so what I like about what, what I like about this, um, I didn't, like I said, I did not clean my brush off. So there's still some blue that comes up every once in a while because I still have obviously paint on my brush. But then I'm just like, that's what's giving me some like different variants and colors into the, the actual ground, which I like. Okay, and I want there to be some darkness on the sides here. And I want it to be a bit lighter in, in the center. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white and I'm just gonna throw it in. And everything is still wet, so it's all gonna blend. And I just wanna put in a little bit of white to give my ground a little bit of Texture, and we're going to add more when we do our camper. You could also, if you don't want it to be as starking with the white, right now it kind of looks like a weird brown lake. That's cool too. Um, you can use yellow as well, and we'll use some yellow. Yellow will make a pop. If you joined us last week for the secret or for the key to the garden uh, painting, um, you would have seen how um, if we put yellow on brown. Um, it's that that's a really natural highlight to it and it kind of sometimes almost looks like it shimmers it's neat so I'm going to just add some yellow right now just to the center and just to give it some more and again once you put the camper on we're going to add even more we're going to have a fire going so we're going to want it to be a bit brighter on this ground as well okay so I'm just going to go back and forth I wanted a little darker on the sides, which I think I've already got going with just the blue that was on my brush. And just get, it's a bit lighter right here. It's like something's supposed to be right there. Okay. There we go. So there's the base. Awesome possum. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to clean off this brush. This is the first time I've actually cleaned off my big fat brush, and I'm still using one brush, this is the first one. Okay, and then I'm just going to try to get the paint off of it. So again, as a reminder, you want to, if you're not going to be using your brush for a little while, you want to try to get all the acrylic paint off your brush. I personally don't like it sitting in the water. Some people leave everything in the water as they go. Um, personally, I, I don't like to do that. Um, I don't really know technically if it, that's worse for it or not. Um, I haven't looked that up. But I like to try to take as much of it off. And you can actually see, like, look how much blue is still on there. Um, and it looks pretty clean as it is, but I'm just going to try to do that as much as possible. Okay, so see my brush is already a bit cleaner. There's still some blue tinge on it. So try to take as much as you can off just to keep your brushes in good condition. I've had my brushes since I was a teen and I am 38, so pretty decent. It's like a good, it's over like 20 years. Like I definitely had them probably when I was like 16 or so. So, so yeah, so you too can maintain your 
<laughs> your items. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Let's think about where we want to put in our mountains. Um, in this image, they are a gray color. So we're going to mix our white and our black. We're going to just put a little bit of black into our white to get that going. And then we're going to pop in wherever we want those mountains to be. Um, the camper is going to go right in the center here. But again, bring your mountain more behind your camper than where you think you're going to need it. So even if you want to put mountains all the way across and paint them in, do it. Um, just because you don't want to have to go back in later once you're doing your camper. Okay. Um, okay, great. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit. I'm using my medium size brush now. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a dab. So I have like a little dab on my brush and I'm just going to start putting it into my white. And then just keep going until I get kind of the base color I want to go with. It doesn't matter if it's too dark or too light of what you want. You can change that up. I would still rather, to be honest, I'd still rather you say lighter than darker because it's easier to get it darker. It's going to be harder to make it lighter unless it dries fully, which is the benefit of um, acrylic. Okay, so let's start off by just putting in the line, like your baseline of where your mountains are going to end. And I'm just going to bring it right across. I know my camper covers a good portion of it, but just for myself, I'm just going to do that right across. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're going to put some trees and the camper is going to go here. So the line doesn't have to be like 100%. Like here is our ground and here is our mountains. Like you don't need to have a straight line like that. That's fine. So don't worry about that. Okay. Get some more white. Okay, cool. And now we're just going to decide where we want these mountains to go. So I'm going to have one come here. And another one come here. And that one's going to be a bit lower. I want that one a bit higher, actually. Okay. And then we're just going to fill them in. Okay, so as soon as you put black, it like overpowers everything. And you want to do this once your sky is dry. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling in the color of the sky into the mountain. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want that to happen on my painting. So I'm not doing that. So now my sky is dry. We took the moment to paint in the brown ground and now our sky is, is dry. So the great thing about acrylic is it dries very quickly. And that great thing about acrylic is also kind of the annoying thing too. The love-hate relationship of acrylic. Okay. So you'll notice probably that my mountain has a bit of dark, a bit of light, and that none of that's intentional. So I've just been, when, I, when I'm grabbing my color, like I'm mixing my gray as I'm going. So sometimes when I'm grabbing it, I'm grabbing more white. Sometimes when I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing more black. Um, and that's what's creating that. Okay, once I kind of have the base of what I want, um, I'm gonna start deciding like where I want some of my highlight or shadow. So since the, sun, the moon is on this side, I do want it to be a bit lighter, okay, on the part that is facing where the moon is, okay. So I'm just going to plop that in, <laughs> plop, plop, it's a weird word, okay. And I'm just going to bring it back, like I bring it down and then I'm just bringing it back. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I just have kind of like where I want that to be. And then um, that's just with pure white. And then I'm just going to mix back some gray again. Okay. And then I'm just going to put in just gradient color down into it because I want it to be more of a peak. So now I just put in some of the gray and just created more of like a line in it. And you can play with it. You can do it a bit more softer. You can make it more harsh. It really depends on what style you want it to be. my brush I still have some black on it I'm noticing so I'm playing with that and just creating a bit more of a shadow on the side okay 
And again, a lot of it's going to be covered or a lot of it may be covered with your tree and your camper. So don't stress out about it being, again, perfect, perfect. You can if you want to. If you really want to get some details going, like go for it. I'm just going to put some of the darkness here. Okay, but you don't have to. I want it to be kind of blotchy. Like I don't want the color to be very um, flat. So I just threw in some black and I just put white over it and just kind of blended a bit. So now it kind of has more of a texture feel to it. But I did it very like light and abstract. Um, I'm not spending a heck of a lot of time on it. I just want it to be give that feel. Okay. So there we go. So there are some mountains right there. And so now let's put some mountains on the other side. Same idea. So I'm going to get a little bit of black, mix it into my white, just to get a base of what I want going. And I think I kind of want these, okay, I'm going to have this one kind of start maybe low off the side of the canvas. I might change them up. I don't know yet. Okay. Um, I think I want this, I want one to come out like a peak. More of a peak, yeah. Again, you'll see like, see I put a little bit too much black in that one, so that's darker than the other one I just did, and that's okay. Okay. So one second. Here we go. Sorry for that little blip. I'm just gonna continue on painting this mountain. That one has more of a peak to it. So again, just with the white and the black, let's just bring it across a bit. This one's just gonna be a little bit of a, a hill. And that's gonna go right behind that camper. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. And again, um, with this, we're going to have a little bit of a highlight. The moon is going to be right about here. So we're just going to put in some white. And a little bit on this side, because this is where the highlight's going to be on this one. And so it did dry a little bit on the one side for me because I had to stop the video slightly. So I'm just going to re-wet it a bit so it blends into this side of the mountain nicely. And again, I'm just going to streak it up a little bit. Add a little bit more white because it kind of took it away a bit. peak to be white. There we go. Okay. Maybe this one might come down a little bit in front of that one, actually. Okay. So you kind of have that coming. That one kind of looks like a weird boulder in the back, but that's cool. So I'm going to have a little bit of a highlight here. Kind of looks pretty darn cool. Get a little bit of highlight on this one. Well, this is still going to be the main one, I think. This one in front. Okay. And again, just adding a little bit of lightness and like light and shadow will just create a bit more texture to this mountain. There's another little bit here too rocky rockiness here okay this one looks pretty good i'm gonna do another one on this side i think i want to do a little bit more for funsies put a bit more of another little ridge 
much on this guy here. So I'm just dabbing some white. This has already been dry, so my paintbrush is a little wet, so I just put a little ridge in that mountain there. The camper's gonna be around here, but it's all good. Just play with it a bit. And so yeah, so I think I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. So I think I'm gonna leave my mountains as they are. Um, and now let us decide what are we going to do next? We are going to put in our moon and do some of our stars. I think that would be kind of fun. So let's do that. So our moon is a nice bright, um, yellow. Um, Ooh, I'm worried now. Did that? Okay. I'm not going to worry about that right yet. Okay, cool. Um, my yellow is still good, so I'm just going to clean off my brush. And again, it's kind of weird. I'm not really a super fan of having the moon really yellowy. Like, it's more of a silver, more of a white. So I eh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I like that. Um, I'm going to switch over to my thinner brush, I think. I kind of want one in between my thinner and my medium. I don't know if I have one right here. No, maybe I'll stick... Yeah, no, I'll do my thinner brush because I want it to be a bit more detailed. I'm just going to put it in my water and get some white paint to start. Um, and I think I will add a little bit of yellow, but not a lot. I want to have like a little like glow, but I don't want it to overpower it. And I don't want my moon to be as big as, as in this image here. So I'm going to just start off smaller than what I would like. And then we'll build from there. So I'm just going to put a circle. Like I said, I want it to be smaller than... Right. Maybe in your sky, maybe you can see some other planets. Maybe it's a whole other world and you have like two moons that are bright. So you can make this however you so desire. Okay. Just keep in mind, um, wherever you put that light source on your mountains, that's where your moonlight should be from. So if the if the so the, the mine it would be weird if I put it over here in this darkness for some reason. I, I would just avoid doing that in your painting. I would try to keep it where it makes like logical sense. But you could always do like a surrealistic painting and make everything crazy. So that's always a possibility. Okay. So I, I think that might be as big as I want my moon to go. Um, I don't really want it much bigger than that. So now that it's still wet with the white, I'm just going to put in a little bit of yellow. Just to make it shine a bit. I just, put, I just touched it. I don't know if you can really see the yellow too much. Maybe you can see it slightly. Um, and then I kind of want a little bit of gray. And I'm just going to put a little bit of gray in here too. Not too much. Just to kind of give it that rocky appearance. Look at my distance. Give it a little bit of shadow too. Too much. I can just put a bit of white back in. There we go. Okay. Now this moon has a bit of a glow to it, and then we were going to apply that glow. So with the same brush I've, I already had, I'm just going to put some kind of circular streaks around this moon like this. And depending how bright you want them to go, make them go as far as you want them to. Okay. So mine's going to glow very brightly, but it's not going to be super huge. That's what I want to go for. Um, and you can just leave it like that. Like, that looks kind of cool. And I like how it took the texture of the canvas um, to not be so um, straight. Or you can put some water, like clean off your brush, put a little bit of water, and then you can kind of touch those areas and then you can soften it, which that, that's what I prefer. So then if you, you put it on kind of with the dry-ish, right, with just the paint, 
it kind of leaves more streaks and then if you just get some water on your paintbrush and then just go over those areas and it will soften it and I feel like that looks more like a glow and I don't know again I can't really I'm not sure if you can really see it 100% on my video but in person it, it's doing what I'd like it to do and then when you're doing that right you're picking up more of the paint and then I'm just going to continue with the circular stroke not to brush it off completely but just to soften it and then it will like pull some of that brightness around and make it a bit more streaky which I really enjoy there you go so that's that's how I want it to be let me show you a bit closer maybe if that works oh no wrong way this way there so that's kind of what I've done with the moon so instead of being this big bright moon I made it a bit smaller but still very bright okay so let's put in some stars also with this one it's very um, punctuated so it's very clear that they're stars um, very cartoon-esque so it has the five points so again you can do that or we can just dot whatever you would prefer however whatever you want to go with so if you want it to look more cartoon-esque then make those five pointed stars if you want it to be more um, realistic I guess then I would suggest not doing that and then just adding some in with some dots so I'm gonna I, I don't know if I'm gonna go with the five pointed star I think I want to stick more with realistic ish kind of feel so I have a bit of yellow on my brush and then I'm just putting white on it as well so I'm just kind of giving like a little tainted white yellow -y brush kind of going on I want it to be a little fluid so I'm putting a bit of water into that and then my paintbrush has just a little bit of it on it and now I'm just going to just touch and put some little dots in the sky trying not to Put them all in the same area trying not to make it too uniform because i tend to do that as you guys have seen in my previous ones trying not to make it look like snow either <laughs> okay so i just have a few little dots in the sky i don't know i kind of maybe i will put in some mm, I think I'm going to leave it like this for now. I might go back and, and make actual like five pointed stars, but for now I'm going to leave it like that for my picture. Once I put in the camper, I might decide to go cartoony, but let's, let's, let's play with that first and then we'll go from there. Okay. So next step up, we can either do the trees or we can do the camper. Um, I think I'd like to put in the... I want to do the camper first. Yeah, I think I do want to do the camper just so we can set up about where it is. But then that, mm, you know what? No, we're going to do the trees first because I might end up having a tree behind the camper. And this image is very clear. The trees are on the side, um, but I might want mine to go a little bit further behind it. So let's let's do the trees. So again, if you are using our um, primary colors, you can mix yellow and blue together and vary it up depending on the shade that you want to go with. Or if you have a premixed color, so I have a premixed green, I'm going to use the premixed green um, just for a bit of um, consistency since it's already mixed. Um, and then I'm just going to mix um, to make it lighter, put some yellow into it and play with the colors that way. Maybe then some brown too, we'll see. Um, I do want some brown actually. So I'm going to get my premixed brown and also use that too. Put some on so I have stuff to play with. Okay, I'm going to use my um, fine brush and we're going to be making some of these pine trees going on here. Okay, let's see how this is going to look. Awesome. Ooh. Not that that really affected it too much, but that's cool. Alright, awesome. So, so I have my fine brush. Okay, let's get our green on our fine brush. Just a bit like that. And then we're going to decide where we're going to place it. So this one in this image is like right here. Okay. These trees look like nice pine trees. I think. Someone who knows more about trees can correct me if I'm incorrect about that. Okay. 
Okay, so that's kind of where I want that tree to, to live. Okay, and then with the green, let's just start blotching in where we want some of these um, branches to go. So with this tree, we're gonna start, it's, they're smaller at the top and then they swoop further out as we go down the tree. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just popping it in and then we're gonna be adding some more color to it and highlights and everything as we go. Okay, and again, these are in nature. They should not be perfect. You can make some stick out a bit further than others. Okay, as it goes down too, it should get a bit thicker too, so to feel free to push down a bit more on your paintbrush. Okay, try and keep a lot of paint on your brush as you're doing it. It's gonna be tricky because the paint will go, obviously. Okay. And I want to make sure this tree is in the foreground nicely. And with the same thing on the other side. So you'll notice that I'm constantly going back and putting paint on my brush and then I'm sweeping it. So basically as soon as I don't have like a solid line, I'm going back and adding more paint to it and then I'm bringing it out. And these ones at the bottom should be thicker and a bit more heavy and opaque. And I'm just using the one color of green right now. We're going to be adding some more color to it pretty much right now. Okay, so I got that. And again, we have the branches coming up, but some are going to come to the front. So I'm just going to add more green. Okay. So there's my first tree. I want it to have a little bit of funky hair. I know it's not hair, but <laughs> it kind of gave me that bat. Flyways, flyways. Okay. So with this tree, we're going to add a little bit of depth. So I'm going to put a little bit, mm, what do I want to use first? I do want to go right to the black. We'll see. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'm doing it. Okay. So I just put a little bit of black with that and I'm just going to add a bit. So whenever there's some shadow, it kind of just underneath the branches. So you want it to have a little bit and you just want to add wherever you think a little bit of darkness to your tree and I'm just going to go up and I'm using again this time I'm not dipping it many times because I don't want this to be super powerful in all the areas right and some of it like you want them to kind of come out in the front like they're, again this tree is not just like the perfect tree that's like on either side so you want there to be a bit of dimensionality to it so keep that in mind and you can crisscross it in front a bit because some of the branches are coming from the front and they're just coming right out. Okay. Okay, so we have a little bit of depth to it going on. I'm gonna get the yellow and I'm gonna put in a little bit of highlight. So again, I'm doing it on both sides, but I want there to be, maybe I shouldn't have done it right at the top. It's okay still wet enough so it's easy to blend and I'm just going to touch some of the tips of it and bring just put a little bit of yellow so you'll see that in the middle too a little bit of highlight coming in okay. and again with acrylic it's great if you do it and you hate it you can wait till it dries you can paint right over it beautiful okay so there we go I'm gonna just get some green now and just like touch up some of the areas just so it's not like super bright okay and for me I want it to be I don't want it to look super realistic I do want it to have that feel of a tree I like a kind of impression of color. I love impressionistic paintings. If anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, 
Um, I'm referring to things like like Starry Night, very famous by Vincent Van Gogh. Um, so that, you know, you know that it's the sky, you know that it's a town, but it's not done realistic. It's done just with the feeling of the color and that pops, right? Another favorite painting of mine is um, The Scream by Edvard Munch. If I'm saying his name right. I love that. I have it hanging in my bedroom, which I think is probably a weird bedroom picture, but, uh, or maybe highly appropriate, I guess, depending on <laughs> your view of things. Um, anyways, um, yeah, so I love, love that. And that one is, that one really captures the emotion and I, I love the vibe of it. Okay, so I'm just continuing to touch and just play with some of the colors some of the dark. Okay, and again, I'm just playing with it. As I've said many times before, I'm not a professional artist. There is probably a real, some really great tips and techniques and tricks to make it look even more realistic or to make it pop. I'm not doing any of those. I'm just playing with it. So as you saw, I just put some colors and I just kind of wanted it to be a bit brighter and for it to come out. I feel like it should be a little bit darker on this side than on the other side. So I'm just going to darken up the side a bit. Oh, I went too. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. I feel like that highlight kind of shouldn't really be there like that. It's okay that there's a bit of a highlight, but I also feel like I've made a lot of my branches very normal. Like all of them are going the same way and I need them to move a bit differently. So I'm just putting some that are sweeping upwards instead of this downward motion. I feel like it just looks more realistic that way. Okay, there we go. Bushy tree. Okay, that's my first tree. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I am gonna put another one on this side um, and I will put a smaller one here. I feel like it looks a little bit funky, like that little one in the picture looks so um, tiny and kind of out of place. Like, I don't know, I'm not really a super fan of it. We'll see, I don't know if I'm gonna add it fully or not yet. Um, but anyways, let's go on this side and we'll do the other, we'll do another tree on that side. Okay. So I'm just gonna get green again. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Ooh, is it really dark? Shoot, I didn't really notice how dark it got. I feel like you can't see a darn thing. That's really not acceptable. Okay, hold on. Let me get this going. Let's see. So I am so sorry about that. Is that gonna work up here? Let's see. Yeah, you know what? There we go. Okay, my apologies. Well, that was really poopy. Okay, so now at least you can see my next tree because you clearly could not see my first tree. Awesome. So let's get some. So I started off with just green. Okay, we're going to decide where we want this tree. I kind of want this tree almost like off the page, not as tall as that other one. So I'm just going to pop it right there. Okay. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to bring some of the... And, and that's the thing, too. Like, you can change up. Um, these ones look very, like, Christmas trees. Like, they're very full and bright. But maybe this tree in the background, maybe this one's not as full. Maybe you can see the stem a little bit more. The stem. Oh, my God. The trunk a little more. And this one I'm going to have coming off the page. So it really just depends on the vibe that you want in your painting. Okay. I'm going to get some black, mix it with my green. And add some... Okay, get some 
yellow. Let's put a few highlights in. Touch some of the branches. The top of the tree I'm not really a big fan of right yet. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my green and let's start playing a little bit with that texture that we've created. The different colors happening. I kind of like that one actually. I feel like the black beneath it kind of does give it a bit more depth. So I don't know if I'm gonna touch that up too much as I continue to touch it. <laughs> as is the protocol of all of Lisa's uh, paintings. Okay, um, now let's do, I wanna do another tree here, but I think I want it to be a little bit more sparse, I think, but we'll see. We'll see how it, what happens when I start painting and we'll, what it tells me to, what it, what it wants for me. Okay, so this one I want it to be maybe like here. Okay, okay, and then I'm just going to put some more of our branches. Okay, I think I kind of want it like that. I don't really want it to be. I'm just gonna put in some dark. Same like I did with the other ones. I just put some dark. Okay, and then I want to get my light. And we're just gonna touch. Have enough yellow on there, but I don't want to put too much on if I'm a little apprehensive. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back to green and then I'm just gonna touch it a bit so it's not doing some green dabs. Okay, there we go. I like this one, it has a little bit of like dimensionality to it. It's a bit different. Big branch sticking out over there. I'm going to get a little bit of brown and just touch it up. But, and a little bit of black actually put the background kind of just blended that and just kind of get the branch of the trunk of the tree going. I just want to put a little bit. There we go. Let's put a little bit of green on top of it so it doesn't look so crazy. That one hasn't filled out at the bottom yet. That one's a little bit random. Okay, cool. Cool, and you can decide if you want to put more or less. Um, you can do whatever you so desire. I think I'm going to leave my trees like this. I kind of like that. I don't really like that weird tree that was there, so I'm leaving it out. Um, it seemed kind of weirdly sporadic, but whatever. It's a campground, right? So they probably were clear to make spaces for camping, so that's my justification of it. Awesome. So now let us think about where we want our camper to be. This is the fun part. This is where we can make it our own. You can make it any color you want. This one's really cute. It's turquoise and pink. It's super adorable. It has like shining lights on it. It's beautiful. So you can really have fun with this. Um, so let's think about how we want to paint this on first. So I'm going to go with my thinner brush to start off. I want the paint to be uh, fluid. So I'm going to add some water to it and I'm going to use white to make my base of where I want my camper to be. So I'm just getting my brush pretty loaded with white paint. And now I'm gonna decide where I want this. So this is gonna be pretty big, it's, it's in the foreground. Um, and we want it to be right in our center. So it is like a circular shape. Um, it's a curve, so let's decide how we want that. And again, try to make it a bit I guess smaller than what you think, so you can always build outwards if, if needed. Um, I'm probably gonna have an issue with this too, but we'll see. Okay, so let's start off. So we want the top of the camper to be here. Okay. And it's gonna come out. Okay, 
it's going to come down. And where is it going to end? It's going to end about just below. Kind of almost where that tree is. That's where we want it to be. Okay, that's just a good guide, actually. Okay, so let's try to make this about the same. So it's going to curve. It goes down and it curves in. Okay, like so. Okay. And now let's bring this line right across the bottom of it. Okay. So we know where our camper is living. On the campground. Okay, so there we go. It's a little off. I can see it already. Like, it's not um, super even, which is fine. So I can make this side kind of come out and down where I want it to be. Need some more water, actually. I'm just, I'm trying to look away from it. It's kind of tricky on my angle that I'm doing it on just to make sure that it's off. So what I would suggest, move the um, canvas, however it makes sense for you to get a good straight-ish line going. I think that's about it. Okay, cool. So that's where I want my camper to be. And what I'm going to do, um, because the color is so off on the base, is I'm actually going to fill it all in with white. You, you, it's up to you whether you want to do this step. I'm going to do it just because I want, you know what, I'm not, I shouldn't use this thin brush. This is ridiculous. I'm going to get a bigger, my medium brush probably, just so I can fill it in a little faster. And I'm just going to get my white paint and I'm going to fill this all in white. Now the rationale for doing this is that then the paint colors that I put on are going to pop and it's not going to be annoying because the background colors are pretty um, dark and they're also quite different. Um, and I don't want there to be a discrepancy between my colors in the front of it, so I'm just going to make it all a nice white. Which does mean that you're going to have to wait until it dries before you put your details in. So keep that in mind. We'll jump and do a different section once we um, have this all painted in white. During this section too, I'm not diluting it with water. I want to keep this white as opaque as possible. So keep that in mind. Do not make your brush watery. Keep it as thick as possible so you can get beautiful coverage. Don't make it super thick. The thicker the paint is, the longer it's going to take to dry. Again, acrylic is, is great because it's not going to take that long even if it is thicker, but um, still. <laughs> So I can see in mine, it's pretty good coverage. I'm pretty happy with it. The blue's coming through a little bit at the top. You probably can't see it too much there because it's very light. Um, so I might have to just go through that again. But we'll see. I think I still think it's okay that when I put the next paint color on, it'll work. So I'm happy with that. So that's where my camper is going to be. Super cute. All right. Okay. So while that is doing its thing... Why don't we put in where we want um, that campfire to be? So again, up to you how you want to do it. Some people, I saw a few other um, options of this image online, and some people did it with like just rocks around the fire um, instead of having the wood crisscrossy. So you can decide again how how you'd like that to be done. Um, actually, I think maybe before we do that. I do kind of want to lighten up the ground a bit around where the camper is because it's going to be difficult to do once we put in the fire. So with my medium brush, I am going to grab my yellow paint. I have yellow and brown still, and I'm going to just put yellow right here. 
it's going to be kind of crazy. It's very bright and everything is dry. Then I'm going to get my brown paint and I'm going to mix it in. More yellow. I want it to be a bit brighter in this area. brown just to be able to mix it into the back nicely. It's pulling the um, light color every time it touches into it because everything's wet. Okay. So I do like that. I think it looks a little better has a bit lighter so when I put that in it's going to come out nicely. Coolio bullios. Okay and then our wheel is going to be about here and there is a bit of some streakiness going on there and I'm thinking I kind of, I don't know if I should put that in right now. We haven't even put our wheel in yet but maybe we will kind of get that idea. So I'm going to get my thinner brush with my yellow. Okay. And my wheel is going to be about here, and so I'm just going to get some feeling of maybe I guess maybe when it was parked, a bit of movement going on. So yellow and brown, and I'm just kind of doing this curly motion. I'm not sure how what what it's going to accomplish. I don't know if I'm going to really love it at the end, but we're just going to do some detailing while things. While our camper dries before we can get in there. So I'm just going with my light, my thin brush, and I'm just putting in a few little streakies to get that feeling that you can see in the image. How there's a bit of um, a highlight, and there's a bit of definition around where the wheel is. And I do think now is the best time to do that before we put in our camp fire. I'm just alternating between the yellow and the brown and I want it to be pretty noticeable of the color so I keep grabbing it and as I grab it it mixes into here. So I'm going to do it like that. Seems kind of strange right now to me, but that's what we're doing. Awesome. Okay, great. So this is, yeah, we're good. We're good to go, guys. So yeah, I'm going to leave the fire, actually, because I did that streakiness. So I jump around a bit. Jump around. Jump around. Jump up, jump up, and get down. Okay. So we want to get this, like, turquoise color. So we're going to need um, some of the blue and white. And to get that turquoise, you're going to add a little bit of yellow um, to kind of get that turquoise color. Um, it's going to be a little tricky to do. And you may want to just kind of paint it um, on, like mix it almost on. Um, so we're going to get some of the blue, some of the white. My blue is almost dry. I definitely do not want it the same color as the sky, so I want it to have that turquoise feel. If you have already like a color that you want to paint it, like you have a pre-mixed color, go for it. It'll make it easier because I know it'll keep it more consistent. I'm kind of creating like a I don't know if I like this color, to be honest. It's kind of a weird green right now. Need more light to it. Okay. Eh, I'm going to try with this, and then I might lighten it up as we go. 
I might have a turquoise actually. We'll see. We'll see. If I don't like it, I might grab my turquoise. Okay, so let's start painting in this, the, whatever color you want your camper to be, um, the top part of it. Okay. So it goes about halfway. You'll notice that I'm not going right to the edge because I'm concerned about this paintbrush. So as I'm getting more comfortable with it, I am then just pushing the paint towards that edge. Because there's quite a bit of paint on my brush. So as I push it, the paint comes out and it doesn't, and it leaves it more flat, which is nice. Okay. So we're going to bring it across. It's kind of like this gray, mint green kind of thing going on. All right now, I don't, again, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to want to change it up. There is um, a door that's going to be on top of this. want to get this base on so mine's kind of like a turquoisey I don't know if you can see it it's kind of like a, it probably looks almost gray with you to be honest it does have a gray tinge to it and then I'm gonna grab some more blue stick it on because I'm not digging this color fully I want it to be a little brighter because I'm just literally it's still wet it's pretty thick and I'm just throwing blue right on it just to make it a little brighter. I haven't added any water yet. I might put a little bit on just to smooth it. I don't know yet. I do like that color a little bit more than what I had before, so that's good. I'm just gonna get some water and bring that to the edge. Okay, yeah, I do like that color. It's pretty cute. Okay, cool. So we got that going. Awesome. I do have a pre-mixed pink, so I'm going to use my pre-mixed pink um, to do the bottom part because I do like this. This is called Tutti Fruity. Very bright and fun. Super pink. If you do not have a pink, you can mix your red and your white and just mix. Um, I would add the red slowly into white um, because the red will overpower it very quickly so I would do it that way okay so now we're going to paint the whole bottom part the pink color okay it's a bright pink I think I want to make it a little lighter so I'm actually gonna lighten up my premix pink with a bit of white or I should say a lot of white <laughs> And then we're going to just put this pink at the bottom. And I do like that shade, so we're good. So we're going to keep going with it. I need to mix a little bit more of this in together. Okay. And the line doesn't really matter too much because in the picture you'll see there's actually like a white line. So you don't even have to go super close to that turquoise okay and there is a door here too so again if you don't want to paint behind the door if you want to be very particular you don't have to bring that all the way across like you don't have to bring that where the door is going to be you can stop and just continue I'm just gonna uh, for me I find it easier just to paint this pretty much the whole thing pink ah, I touched it weirdly oh well okay. and again the wheel is going to be about here don't worry too much about that and there is going to be like um a border around most of it not really around the actual oh this song this is like music's epic Very intense 
Ooh, I really shouldn't be doing it with this brush. This brush does not make me confident. Okay. I'm gonna just switch brushes momentarily. Mine's a very pastelly <laughs> camper. Maybe yours is very vibrant. You can make the camper whatever way you want. You can put flames on it. You can put Pokemon, draw a Pikachu. You can do whatever you want. You can make it look like a Pokeball. That would be kind of cool. Like, forget the pink and the turquoise. Like, make it a Pokeball. <laughs> make it a giant Pokeball. No, make it a camper still, but like, have it like red and white. That'd be kind of cool. Right? Or if it's something, if there's something else that you really are into, right? Give it some details like that, right? Again, you can make this like fully your own. This does not have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like um, our, our example image. You can do whatever you want. Just bringing that down because I kind of touched it weirdly. And I do want, I think it's going to be white anyways, but I'm just going to bring that. I don't even know if it's a teal color, to be honest. It's kind of a weird. Boom. Yeah, this is totally looking more to me like the wheel marks, like where we parked it. So I, kinda, I, I do like that more now. I wasn't sure if I was going to dig it before, but I do like it now. So, yay. Awesome. Possum. Okay. So now I'm going to see where I want my pink door to be. Um, so I'm going to want it to be pretty much there. It's still pretty wet, but it's very thick. So I'm going to go with it and I'm going to add my 2D fruity without being lightened right onto the canvas. And I'm going to pl uh, mark out where I want my door to be. I might get in the way a little bit because it's kind of a weird angle for me to do that being right handed. Um, okay, so I want the door to be about here. Okay, and it is going to go up into this teal color. Okay, maybe I want it bigger than that. I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to fill it in and I might decide to um, make it bigger once I have it filled in. I'm not sure yet. And you'll probably see that you'll need to put another coat on where the turquoise or the darker part is. Um, that in mind. Okay. So that is basically where I want that door to live. Um, I don't know if I am going to make it any taller because I do want those lights to dangle and I think um, I'm giving them enough room to breathe by keeping my door just slightly over that turquoise -y. I'm going to call it turquoise. It's not really turquoise right now. Okay, so I'm just going to let it dry. Um, I am going to go over that darker part at the top afterwards. Okay. All right. Um, and now I'm going to go back and plot in where I want my wheel to be. So I'm, I'm just bouncing around based on what's dry and what's not. Um, so now let's plot in the wheel. So the wheel is going to be about... Hmm, like one-fourth 
of your camper size. Um, but it's not going to be like the first fourth section. So it's going to be, so like look at the bottom and say, okay, this is like one fourth, one, two, maybe not one fourth, maybe just like one third is like this. That'd be too big. So I wouldn't do one third. So yeah, so I would do, yeah, I would do it a bit, like just a little bit less like than one third of the size of the bottom. And then I would just shuffle it. So say whatever one third is shuffle it and then shorten it slightly that's kind of where you how big your wheel is going to be that's what i would suggest um and again start smaller than bigger you can always make it larger since we're using black as well i'm just making my black easy to almost like a pen if possible okay and it's going to go up no, not halfway, like the full wheel does when you have the gray in it, um, but not halfway, like maybe just about um, almost halfway into your pink area. And about like half the wheels there and half the wheels at the bottom. Okay, ready? I'm not, okay. Let's start smaller. I'm going to try to match what I've done at the top at the bottom here. Trying to fill it out a bit just so I can see what this looks like. Yeah, I think that's working. It's a little wonky, that's for sure. Just a tad. Again, if you're doing this, I'm expecting you to be able to like move your canvas around so it makes sense. So it's easy for you. Don't just try to move the canvas so it's easy for you to paint this the way you need to paint it. If you need to hold it upside down, if you need to do whatever you need to do, do it. This I'm just trying to keep it in the one spot so you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing, but you should be playing with it as much as you possibly can to get it going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white to my brush. Okay, so now it's a, there's a gray going on. And I'm just going to add another layer in here. Or an outline, I guess. With the black circle I just made, I'm just going to put another put a, a gray circle. Okay. And it's wet, and it's good, and it's blending, and it's nice. Not blending fully, it just is allowing me to kind of fix the circle I made, try to make it even on all sides ish. It's not going to be perfect. That's okay. There we go. It looks like a little bit like a flat tire, but uh, maybe mine has a flat tire. <laughs> We're not leaving the campground anytime soon, are we? Okay. So we got that going, and then I'm going to add a bit even more white to it. Oof, I'm overtaking all my white now. Let's see how this goes. Okay. And I'm just going to go, oof, I don't like that. Okay, like this. And then I'm just going to get the middle done. even a lighter. Okay, let's plot in where we want our window to be. So our window is going to be like a very light blue. Oh man, I need more white. I need more blue. 
I mean, probably should do white somewhere else, to be honest, because it's a bit messy in that other area. Okay. So blue. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to mix with my thin brush. Get a little bit of blue into my white. I want it to be a different color than what we have. Okay, I think I've accomplished that. It's a lighter blue. Okay, great. And now we're gonna plot in where we want that window to be. So the window is about the height of the door there, so it's not gonna be very big. Um, I'm gonna have it about here. You can have yours wherever you want. You can make it as big as you want. Doesn't matter. Okay, mine's going to be about here. Okay. It's almost, it looks almost white, I think, but it, there is a tint of blue in it. Okay, so there's the window. So that's just the simple window there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a frame around it. And I want the frame to be in brown. I want it to be like a lighter brown. So I'm going to get a little bit of brown, stick it in some white. some water so it's easy peasy to paint around in a nice uniform way and we want it a little darker I think I also need some more brown there we go okay so I have quite a bit on my brush it's very light and I'm gonna do a nice little frame around my window so let's start Or I mixed it. <laughs> I was like, where's my brown? I can't find it. Okay, there we go. So we have a little frame around our window. And if you want to put a little bit of, um, if you want to like highlight it or a bit more, you can get um, a little bit of the darker brown and we can just touch the inner line with the darker brown. So, I can't see any of that. A little too up right now you know what let's just wait we'll wait till it dries and then we can add some more detail okay cool so as that is drying now we can what shall we do next all right let's put in so this what camper has a nice white um i guess emphasis or line that goes right over or right across to connect these two colors and it, there's also a nice white frame that goes right around the door. So let's put that in right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna get white on my brush. Try, I'm gonna put a little bit of water just to make it a little smoother, but not super opaque, or not super um, thin because I want it to be opaque. Okay, and again, start thinner than what you think you want, and then you can always make it thicker. I already touched my door. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, move this around so it makes sense to you. 
you want it to be upside down, you want it to be on your lap, whatever you want. Move the painting where it makes sense so you have the most control over how you want this line to be. I have like a big glob of like paint. What was that happening? Ah, okay, there we go. That was from my paint drying off a bit, I think. Well, that's staying underneath my nail, it looks like. Okay, that's fine. Not like I haven't had paint underneath my nail before. Okay, so I was gonna put in this line. Okay. And just by doing that, I think it already looks a bit more cleaner. So I'm not really caring if I'm going a bit globby on it. I'm okay with it. I want it to be um, a nice, thick definition line, so I'm fine with that. And the added texture works, I think, for this picture. So now we're gonna do the same thing around the door. Harder to see it against this pink. If you're using a, a brush, like you can get one that's thin enough so that the length or the width of the brush is just the width of what you want. That makes would make your life easier, make my life easier too. And you can just like easily drag it along. It's okay. I feel like I need it a bit thicker on the top to match the sides. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Good. So now we have our white around there, which is fantastic. Coolios. All right. Um, now we also still have to do, there's a bit, there's like a gray line. I guess it's, and it goes basically at the bottom around the wheel and then around the base of there. And then we also have some nice detailing around the door just to make it pop a bit. Um, I think what I want to do is, um, is the wheel dry yet? Yeah, okay, so let's do that next. Let's get that gray in, and then we'll put in the lights, and then we'll do the fire, and then we'll be super happy. Wow, this part's taken quite a bit of time. This is not a difficult painting, really. Um, a lot of, like, coloring, a lot of, like, very, like, solid colors, but as we saw with when we did the peacock a while ago, this can take quite a bit of time. Okay, so... Let us get a gray going that we like. Get some more white in here. And I want it to be pretty light. I don't want it to be very dark at all. So I want it more white in here. I want more water in here. Okay, there we go. I'm feeling this. So I have a very light gray color and my brush is pretty covered with it. And we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna go at the bottom here. Get the 
not going to paint on the wheel. We're going to paint around the wheel. Stay away from the black. Closer. I'm so scared. Okay. Yeah, I already painted on top of the black. Okay, if it happens, you paint up of the black. You can always get black afterwards, and we can always repaint if you mess up your lines when you're doing this. Alternately, if the wheel wasn't looking good, this might actually help the wheel look better. You use this to circle it out. I think I kind of like touched it in a weird way, so I'm gonna have to go back and. Um, put that back in. This is not gonna, is this gonna go over the white line at the bottom? No, it's gonna go to the white line. So it's gonna go right to it, but not over it. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna touch it slightly because there's, there's a slight, it's, it's here too, just to continue it. Okay. Where's all? Okay. And like I said, I'm going to just touch the black back in because it's, I kind of messed it up a little bit. So that's fine. That will be how it is. Done, done, done. Okay, so now we're gonna put in the string for our party lights. So this string for me will be black. So I'm just gonna continue with the black that I just used to touch up my wheel. I watered it down a bit. So again, it's easier and um, for it to be smooth. Okay, but it's still not a heck of a lot. And then the lights, um, so we're gonna have it start, like they'll be like here. I'm gonna bring the string down. Okay, and up. Okay. Try to keep it thin and opaque. And then this one's going to come around like this. How cute. Okay. Now, this has lights on it. You can put lights. You can put flags. You know how they have those nice little, like, you know, make it look like a little party vehicle. You could do that, too. I kind of want to do like a little colorful flag, but I feel like it's going to take a long time. So I think I will just stick for today with doing um, the lights, but yeah. But if you want to do, I think it'd be really cute to have like some colorful flags going on personally. That's kind of what I would kind of like to do. Maybe I will just do flags. Mm, we'll call it for lights. No, let's just stick with what it is. Okay, we'll stick with lights. I'll show you how to do the lights. And then um, if you guys want to change it up, flags are pretty straightforward. You can just put like some nice colorful triangles going on. Okay, so with the lights, you're going to get some yellow on your brush. And we're going to just plot out where we want these lights to live. So they're just yellow circles. Okay. I'm just gonna put them in, try to have them evenly spaced where you think they'll live. Okay. So I put a bit of water and now my brush is not cooperating the same way it normally would. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. Let's touch this one up so again. I think I got a better flow as I went on. There we go. Okay. So they're pretty and cute and nice. They're kind of glowing as well. So similar to how we did that. We're just going to wait a little bit, I think. What I want to do is, I want to actually... I'm just going to put a, a, a bit of white in each of them. Yes, I am. So I'm just going to put a dollop of white in each of them. And I think by doing that, the yellow kind of looks like it's a glow, and that white is the light. So I think that already kind of brightened it up in a kind of simplified way. Okay, so that's how I've done mine for now. The other thing we can do is you can go in really thinly, and I might do that still because you know I have, you know me, I can't help but touch my painting like a thousand times. Um, and then you want to just like drag it a bit. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. Can I give it like swirl feel? So it's not so much of a dot, but it kind of You know what? That, I do kind of like that better. The dot is a little bit too simple. So I'm just touching the dot around it a bit. And I, I actually, yeah, that does actually make it look more like it's shining. Here you go. Let me show you that. So I just kind of smushed my paint around. Ooh, it's kind of hard to see in the back of it. I kind of smushed it. So it looks a little better, I think. Okay, cool. Parfait. Next up is what? What are we going to do next? We still got to put this handle. You know one can get into this um, place without um, this handle on the door. So let's go with the black paint. Oop, beep, boop, beep. Okay. Sorry, I say weird things. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit of water going. We still have to do the fire. The fire. I think I'm just going to make mine like a simple circular doorknob and it's going to come up and then it'll look so it, it, like it's a circle and then I put a little line on the top and a little line on the bottom like that. Okay, that's why I did my doorknob. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, next up is what? So we can put some detailing um, around the door, like you can put some black. I'm not going to do that right yet because our, I'm trying to be conscientious of the time and this has gone for quite um, a bit and we still have not put in um, our uh, campfire. And I do want to do that with you guys before we um, call it quits. Okay, so I kind of want to zoom in. Can I do that? Oh yeah. Let's zoom in on the campfire a bit. There we go. So I've zoomed in on the campfire. So that's what we're going to work on now. Oh, I didn't know I could. That's so cool. Okay. Nice. So let's put in these um, fire logs that we're going to do. Um, they look pretty black to me. So let's go with black. And then we will lighten them up as we need. Maybe we want them to be like grayish or brownish. Brown's not going to show up because we already have a brown ground. So let's put in one of the logs. Okay, there's one. Okay, always make it thinner than what you want, and then you can always thicken it up as you desire. Logs do not need to be uh, perfect. Logs are all weird shapes. As you know, if you've been camping, if you've seen any, they're all different. So this is very, like, it looks very traditional, like two almost perfect kind of logs. But some of them are all funky shapes, so you can make yours however you want to make them. It's like a big pile of stuff, it doesn't matter. I think I will actually, I want to have another log kind of coming out this way, because I feel like just having those two is kind of weird. 
Maybe to give it a bit more stability or something. I don't know. I feel like it's starting to look a little bit more of it too. There's something here too. I want to make it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm adding. Okay, it's not very opaque, and I want it to be a bit more opaque. Okay, so I've, I've just kind of put a few more going on there, and it's pretty wet right now. Um, it's not really going to hold any other color at the moment. I am going to try to put a little bit of gray in it just to give it a bit of dimensionality. Dimensionality. Let's try and say words. Okay. Um, so this one's going to be the forefront. Okay. I'm going to curve a bit in the front. Okay. And then we're going to have this one in the back. Above this one, okay, and this in the front, so we're just gonna give it a bit of a line there, too. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of detail with the gray, just to, as you know, with all wood, there's it's not just a solid piece, there it usually has a bit of texture. And so I'm just going to add a little bit before I stick our fire on, which is going to cover some of it anyways. I'm just touching it a bit because it's wood and the gray works because it's in fire. So there we go. Okay. So there's my wood. It's a little different. You can make it more the traditional way if you so desire. Oh, you can't. it's really dark. Whoa. Just looks like piles. Oh, 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 oh. That's brighter. There you go. That's what my wood looks like. Okay, cool. You can leave it like that if you wanted. You're like, you know what? There's no fire. The fire is out. <laughs> We're not putting a fire in today. That's cool, too. You don't have to put a fire in if you don't want to. Um, it looks kind of cool the way it does, to be honest. Um, I am going to put a fire just for the heck of it. So let's decide how we want this fire to be. So the fire is yellow. There's some red in it. There's some orange. There's some white. And it's very streaky and fun. And it's going to be interesting. So let us... So I want to start with, I kind of want to start with white and yellow and then add darker colors. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get white. And again, if you have a different way to do this, go for it. Okay. And I'm going, so fire is kind of, ooh, it's crazy. Ah. Making the sounds helps every time. For me, it makes me raver. And if it helps you, use it. Use the sounds. Okay, let me get some yellow. Give me my yellow. Okay, I got some yellow on my brush. Okay, I didn't clean off the white, so there's still white on there too. Anti-clean brushes anti-clean palettes. Don't tell me what to do. Okay, I'm kind of digging the way it's looking so far. So I need to get red. I didn't put it red on my canvas yet because I haven't used any yet. I'm just going to put a little bit of red because I don't need much. I get accents sometimes too. It's crazy. Okay, um, let's get some red going. Okay. The red is around. It's around the bottom here. There's a little bit of red. Right? It's going to kind of come up a little bit sometimes. Maybe a little bit it's going to come up. I don't know. Again, if it looks like poop, guess what? Wait till it dries. Do it again. And if you like it, amazing. Let's put little dots. Let's go. I'm not putting the red up. I want to keep the red more 
lower, but it's kind of weird because the white isn't really not usually white. I need some orange. I'm gonna mix some orange right now. Get oranges in here. So the one thing about I, I'm I'm a proponent for getting cheap paints and stuff because I'm cheap and um, I don't have a lot of money. So um, <laughs> I'm all for it. The thing with it is that sometimes the color isn't the true color. So when you mix like yellow and red, you're like, oh, it's going to be orange. And all of a sudden you get like a peachy color. That's what ends up happening when we use um, dollar store materials. So for me, I just kind of go along with it. If it works, it works. It doesn't. It doesn't. If you get a pre-mix one, cool. That's why sometimes if you're doing the dollar store one, since it's cheap anyways, I get all the different colors, so you don't have to worry so much about that. Um, if you're going to invest in fancy, like nicer paints, then again, you could get more of the traditional colors of the expensive paints, and that would be better. And you can make more out of it and whatnot. Okay, so I think I kind of went weird with that base. I don't like it. I feel like it's too red. Ugh, it's too thick. I, I need it more streaky. Yeah, better. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Okay. And sometimes fire, you know how it kind of goes up and it crackles and I think there's a little bit of that going on here. Right? Like, come on. Let's do it. There's a little bit of crackling happening. I'm gonna add a little bit there. I need a little bit of white, I think. There we go. Okay, it's gonna make some little lines like that. There we go. Okay. So there's my fire. Oh, let's make sure there's still some light going. So that's what I've done. I've made it a bit whiter and I've put some other colors in it. You can again do it however you so desire okay so pretty much um, with the way this painting is it's pretty much done um, there are like again like so there's detail if you want to make it a bit more make a pop a bit more you can put a nice thin line around the inside frame of that window you can add a black line like in this painting here to the bottom and to the, the circle part here around this door and that will make it pop just like in the image here in our inspiration image as you can see this image is from stepbystepppainting.net so this is their um design um which is fantastic there's so many great resources online and i strongly recommend you checking out different ways of people going through instruction and um again i have no technical official training i just do this because i freaking love it so um that's what you get from me but from other people you'll get some other great tips and points of how to do it um, I think I'm going to leave mine like so. So, um, yeah, I might end up, I think, after I might put like a rock or two or something, like kind of make it a little, have a bit more rocks. And I think I will put some of the details in and maybe I might put some stars in, make it more of those five pointed stars. But for now, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out really nicely. Um, and yeah, so let's go back here. So, yeah. Oh, that's a great angle. Love the chin angle they're fantastic all right cool so thank you so much for joining me today and i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial um so again that's our campa da, 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 da. fantastic and i will see you guys all again so we have a live painting every um saturday at 2 p.m and um yeah and you guys can vote every um tuesday at um at by a Tuesday, every Tuesday, you'll have um, an, an option to be able to vote as well. All right. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.